Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway recently dumped their positions in Verizon, while adding to their positions in companies like Apple and Occidental Petroleum, at least according to their latest 13F filings as at the 30th of June. Of course, this comes against the backdrop of rather negative quarterly earnings. In particular, Berkshire revealed an unrealized loss of $53 billion in the latest quarterly report, and an overall loss of $44 billion, with the operations making up some of the unrealized stock losses they had. So what I'm going to go through in this video is the likely reason they dumped Verizon, and the likely reason they've had these other holdings in the portfolio, which they've really doubled down upon. Now my name's Mark, welcome back to the channel. If you have any thoughts about what's going on with Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio, and why it is Warren Buffett likely made these moves, do let me know that in the comments below. But otherwise, let's dig a little bit deeper into what's going on with Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio to understand it a little bit more. So let's start with a basic overview of what is in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio and how Berkshire Hathaway has performed more generally. So if you look at the largest holdings within Berkshire Hathaway, we can see that Apple is by far the largest holding, hovering around 40% of the portfolio, depending on exactly which 13F filing you're looking at. In the latest filing, it was around 39%. This is followed by other major holdings, and these are spread broadly across financials, some consumer staples such as Coca-Cola and Kraft Heinz, but also some energy and resources companies such as Chevron and Occidental Petroleum. It shows a reasonable degree of diversification here, albeit not diversified across every single sector. It furthermore highlights that Warren Buffett is very much betting on his best bets, or at least what he perceives to be his best bets. So there's diversification, but so-called smart diversification, where he prioritizes companies he believes have the strongest prospects, at least as it relates to Berkshire Hathaway. And particularly focusing on Apple, the strong share buyback had been one of the key things he'd specifically talked about with Apple. Apple also has staged a recovery since the 13F filings came out, suggesting that retaining and maintaining that position in Apple has at least done reasonably well since the 13F filings were released. We also see other major names here. We see a couple of major banking companies, such as Bank of America, for example. But further on down in the portfolio, we've got other companies such as US Bancorp and Citigroup, both of which are reasonably sizable positions. In the resources sector, like I said, we've got Chevron and Occidental Petroleum. But Berkshire Hathaway also has some unlisted companies within that space as well. So that's broadly what is in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio. If we look at Berkshire Hathaway's stock performance, we can see that Berkshire Hathaway as an entity has outperformed the broader S&P 500 throughout 2022. This is a reasonable benchmark because Berkshire Hathaway's beta is around one, give or take a little bit. However, during quarter two, Berkshire Hathaway did underperform the broader S&P 500. This is because many of the stocks that were specifically within Berkshire Hathaway didn't do particularly well during quarter two. Now, exactly which point we look at in quarter two will indicate which one is doing better or worse at that time. But during this time period, we did see Apple running into some issues, although it did subsequently recover. Furthermore, companies like Chevron and Occidental have had some issues as oil prices have started to go down, as recession fears have really started to take hold. So during quarter two, Berkshire Hathaway didn't do that well stock price-wise, albeit over the broader 22 time horizon, they have actually outperformed the market. Now, the foregoing discussion has talked quite a lot about how Warren Buffett has added to his portfolio. However, if you want to look at how you would add things to your portfolio, you're obviously going to need data yourself to be able to evaluate this. So with that in mind, you might need a platform like Simply Wall Street. Simply Wall Street is a platform that has a ton of information about the fundamentals of companies, about analyst forecasts, about the price to earnings multiples and other multiples for that firm compared to its peer companies. And not only that, also estimates for the firm's fundamental value, in addition to what analysts are saying. I found it super useful for my portfolio analysis, and hopefully you will as well. And if you check it out using my link in the description below, you can sign up for one of their free plans, but also you can access a 30% discount on one of their premium offerings. Like I've said, I found it super useful, and hopefully you will too. So with an overview of Berkshire Hathaway out of the way, we can now look at the components of the portfolio and the major changes that they're in. So let's start with the major additions, or the major increases in positions because there weren't really any major, at least standard additions to the portfolio, the major changes were increases in best bets within the portfolio, or at least what he believes are the best bets in Berkshire Hathaway, at least as far as I can tell. And I'll split these into a few different categories. Firstly, we've got an increase in Apple. 
Now, Apple has been a company that has been core to Berkshire Hathaway for quite some time. Warren Buffett has described it as one of the crown jewels in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio and a standout performer for Berkshire Hathaway. Now, he has previously remarked in positive terms about Apple's share buyback and about how that has improved and helped Berkshire Hathaway's performance. However, with Apple, we can see that as a reasonably strong company that was significantly hurt during the broader tech sell-down. So I could hypothesize that he might have expected or believed that Apple was oversold and oversold relative to its fundamentals, therefore purchased more stock within Apple in order to take advantage of a broader tick up in the quality companies within the tech sector. Put differently, in the tech sector, there's really a bifurcation. You've got the super speculative companies and you've got the quality companies whose earnings very much are quality type firms and can behave very much like value companies as opposed to speculative growth companies. The next category is in resources, broadly speaking. And here we've got two major companies, Occidental and Chevron. Occidental has gotten a lot of attention from Warren Buffett, and he's been steadily increasing his stake in Occidental throughout this whole time period. Chevron, however, has seen an increase in its stake as well. Both of these do broadly similar things. However, they do have different fundamentals. He's likely betting on long-term positive uplifts in the oil sector more generally, in particular due to there being a structural shortage in oil production, particularly in the United States, where there's been a general dearth of reinvestment in refining and drilling capacity, largely because companies aren't very sure about how future administrations or the Biden administration will treat CapEx within the sector. And because CapEx has a long payback period, many of these companies have been reticent to go out and invest more in oil more generally. Hence why we'd have a long-term undersupply in oil, and hence why Warren Buffett might be betting on that sector. Occidental in particular seems to be prioritizing generating cash to pay out to its shareholders and to its lenders, so is very much cognizant of that potential long-term decline in oil and the desirability of paying out that cash to investors. The next category is Activision Blizzard. Now, this is really just the take of a target play because that company has had major issues in the past, major corporate governance issues. However, it has been a takeover target, particularly by Microsoft. So I suspect that he's investing primarily for the takeover target basis rather than anything else. The next category is financials. And really here, the one I want to focus on is Citigroup. Citigroup has historically been trading at a price to book value significantly under its peer firms. This gives Citigroup a degree of upside potential. Now, of course, when a company is trading below its book value, so a price to book value below one, particularly relative to its peer companies, one has to wonder whether either A, the book value is misstated, B, the book value is really not worth as much as the company thinks it is, and or C, there are major corporate governance problems that have been weighing down on that book value, meaning that the market believes they're going to fritter away their resources. For example, spend cash frivolously, or they're not going to be able to maintain their loan book in the case of Citigroup. Citigroup has, however, had corporate governance changeovers, which means we might have a priced book value that is reflecting historical fundamentals that is not necessarily reflected governance upside that might be ongoing. That could potentially be one of the factors feeding into Warren Buffett's position here. It could also have been simply looking at the priced book value or priced tangible book value, comparing to peer firms, and then comparing Citigroup in terms of its bad debt situation. And assessing Citigroup as being of relatively similar quality to other peer companies, but trading at a relatively lower multiple, and therefore appearing relatively more attractive within the financial situation. It's much the same reason as why I personally took a position in Unicredit as an example. Unicredit, of course, trading at a very low price to tangible book value ratio, while also doing a significant share buyback. So that, to some extent, might be what is ongoing with his Citigroup position. So those are the major categories that really stood out to me. However, there were some additional additions in the portfolio as well, which to my mind were relatively less interesting or relatively smaller. If you think I've missed anything, do let me know that, of course. We can now look at the major reductions in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio. And here there's a few that stand out or are at least somewhat interesting. The first one is Verizon. Verizon, of course, is in the telecommunications sector. Many of you will have seen ads for Verizon and their plans that they're offering. Now, Verizon is an interesting one in the portfolio. It doesn't seem that Berkshire Hathaway would have made much money, if anything, on this position. 
So this position is probably not the best bet in the portfolio, and reducing it could be just a matter of portfolio repositioning. If we're looking at analyst forecasts and analyst recommendations, most analysts are putting this at a hold or potentially a sell. There's relatively little buying support for Verizon. So this is likely consistent with what analysts are broadly saying. However, if we do look at a platform like Simply Wall Street, for example, we can see on Simply Wall Street that Verizon's price to earnings multiple is below that of peers. This implies one of two things. Either Verizon is underpriced in the market, and given what analysts are saying, that doesn't seem to be the case. Or B, Verizon has relatively low growth prospects, which is probably more likely the case, and one doesn't see clear ways which Verizon is going to have a major growth catalyst. So this could be a matter of cutting their losses in the portfolio if they don't think there's going to be very much future upside, and if analysts also don't see very much upside to Verizon either. The next major one is store capital. Store capital is a real estate investment trust, and given the current economic climate, with rising interest rates and recession fears, real estate maybe isn't the best area to be in necessarily. So it's quite possible reducing the position in store was simply to reposition the portfolio for the current economic conditions. Now, Warren Buffett does appear to prefer to invest for the long term, but of course he is going to consider economic conditions when going out and investing. And that would largely be consistent with what analysts will be looking at as well, given the real estate sector more generally. The last major change I'll go over is in General Motors. Warren Buffett significantly reduced his holding in GM. This is curious, because he appeared to have sold his shares at the bottom. General Motors declined throughout 2022. However, it staged a little bit of a recovery since the 30th of June, notably after these 13F holdings came out. Furthermore, analysts overwhelmingly have GM as either a buy or a hold. 63% of analysts are having GM as a buy. Furthermore, the target price is higher than the current share price. The target price is reportedly around $50 a share, on a current share price of around $40. So while there might not be significant upside over the next 12 months, the target price is above the current share price. So the decision to sell these shares is a little bit curious. It quite possibly reflects a worsening economic situation and a perception that if we're heading into a recession, if we're not already in a recession, and if interest rates are going to continue to increase, as the Federal Reserve has signaled they will, then potentially people will be spending less money on new cars, and therefore there would be less upside potential in the new car market. To some extent, the inflation data slightly reflects this, with used cars declining in price, suggesting there might be less frothiness within the vehicle market, broadly speaking. So that's likely what underscores Warren Buffett's decision to reduce his holdings in General Motors. However, overall, there weren't many reductions within Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio, at least relative to the purchases. And it appears overall, Berkshire Hathaway was more focused on increasing the size of the portfolio rather than reducing it. This, of course, is relatively unsurprising given the date of the 13th, which came out as at the 30th of June, when the market was broadly trending downwards. And generally, you don't want to buy high and sell low you want to do the opposite. So Warren Buffett might have been relatively reticent to sell at the market valuations that were prevailing at the time. It will be interesting to see what happens in the next 13F filings as the market has had a bit of a potential bear market rally, and he might have sold into that to some extent. It will be interesting to see what happens with the next filings. So that's an overview of Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio and the major changes in their 13F filings. The major changes, of course, being they've dumped Verizon, but added additional holdings in companies like Apple, Chevron, Occidental, and the like. Broadly speaking, this appears to reflect general portfolio repositioning rather than whole-scale major changes. I suspect that this probably will do reasonably well for Berkshire Hathaway in the next 13F filing. The reason for this is the market has staged a bit of a recovery, which might bode well for them, assuming the market doesn't then drop off the edge of a cliff. Michael Burry does seem to think the market is going to broadly deteriorate and has warned about this consistently with his talk about bear market rallies. We'll see come the next 13 F filings who is ultimately correct, between people like Michael Burry, who have sold all of their positions, and Warren Buffett, who has seemingly maintained and added to his portfolio. It certainly will be interesting to see what happens over the next quarter. Nevertheless, if you have any thoughts about what is going on with Warren Buffett's portfolio, with his portfolio repositioning, and whether it is well designed. I would be interested to hear that in the comments below. 
And otherwise, of course, do check out my video on Michael Burry's portfolio, where I go through his decision to significantly downsize his portfolio and why it is he's likely to have done so.